Okay, so in this video, I'll be solving example 7.1, where we look at the displacement thickness of a boundary layer in a square duct. And in this example, you should more so focus on using it as a demonstration of the principles that we've seen from video 19. That's really what its value is here. So this is just a simple example. That's a bit of plug and chug to show what's going on. So we have a duct, so air flowing into a one meter square duct with a uniform velocity right there, five meters per second. It forms a boundary layer on the walls as we'd expect, right? It's a square duct, so each of these walls is a flat plate. The fluid within the core region, right? So outside the boundary layers, so core region shown as like basically here, right? So that's like core region there. Um, flows as if it were inviscid, right? So from advanced calculations, it says, or whatever, sometimes experimentally, they figure out that they can calculate the uh, displacement layer as such. So we're basically asked to figure out what's the velocity then of the air within the duct, but outside of the boundary layer. Okay, so this question sort of emphasizes the influence of the boundary layer in this duct and how we could, for example, use a concept like displacement thickness. It's basically saying, Displacement thickness is saying, like, within this orange region, let's just look kind of like right here. Okay, so this orange region here has been slowed down because of the viscous effects and the friction of the wall. So because it slows down, right, you have less mass flow here and here. Less mass flow there, but we have to have mass conservation throughout the entire duct. So it means you speed up the flow in this core region here. So how do we calculate the velocity in the sped up region? Well... The displacement thickness tells us, you know, the location of where the wall would be, right, if the whole rest of the flow had a nice even velocity profile at capital U. So we make all our traditional assumptions that it's incompressible, steady, that sort of thing. So because of that, that means that Q1 equals Q2 volumetric flow rates must be equal, right? Because incompressible means there's no change in density. So we have to have Q1 equals Q2, 0.1 here, 0.2 here. Okay, so our volumetric flow rate is our velocity times our area. So we first do the U1, A1. We're given all this information, right? That's just five meters per second. I'm going to always keep my units, of course. And it's a one meter duct, one meter squared. So that's five meters cubed per second. And that is going to have to equal Q2, which is going to be at point 0.2, the velocity times the area there. We can instead simplify this expression because we are given the displacement thickness. And we know that the displacement thickness is the location the wall would be to account for the loss of mass due to those frictional effects. So we can then just take the free stream velocity multiply it by our area, and instead of the duct being one meter wide, we're going to minus two of the delta stars, right? So we have one on this side, one on this side. So our real area that we're flowing over is this guy shown here. So then we square that. And then we can say, there. therefore, our volumetric flow rate, which we know is five meters cubed per second, is going to equal u times 1 minus the equation for delta star so we sub that all in there and I'll scroll down so I subbed like this guy in right here because we were given that and then we just rearrange so we can say or u equals 5 We'll keep our units just to make sure, meters cubed per second, over 1 minus 0 0.0070x to the half, all of that squared. That's a distance, so that's units on that is meters squared, which I can keep here as well. That's meters squared, and that's meters per second. So that way, the meters squared would cancel there, and we'd get units of meters per second. All right, we box that guy out so everybody knows it's our answer. And yeah, just a quick example of how you can use displacement thickness more to get the concepts than anything else so we can really understand exactly how this is applied. I just realized, too, there's supposed to be a 2 here. That's 2 delta star when we're dealing with the 1 meter. 
right? So put this two in here. I just copied that down wrong, so just fix that for me if you can. And yeah, that's just helping us understand what we mean by displacement thickness. So it's like you can think of it as like a shrinking of the duct in this case, or you know, a moving of the wall or the fat flat plate distance to account for the fact that we have a decrease in the mass flow rate because of the slower flow.